Hello everyone and welcome, yes, my name is Arrowfire and welcome to another episode of my top 5, where today we're going to look at Transformers weaponry. Now, let me say this right from the start. This video is not about glorifying guns, glorifying weapons in any other form. I've wanted to do this video since the start of the channel, but I've always been a little concerned as to how it would be interpreted. The purpose of the video is just to look at the weaponry that's used in Transformers and is repeatedly shown throughout the years, and how it is an extension of a character and their personality traits, much more than a weapon itself. Let's be honest, there's not too much to choose from because most of the Transformers just fire generic looking guns. I don't think even to this day we really know what Baruticus's weapon actually looks like definitively. He wields Shockwave as much as anything else. What I want to look at is to how the weapon kind of enhances the character's personality and makes them look a bit more badass, if indeed it does at all. But I didn't want this message to come across the wrong way. I even put out a Twitter poll on it recently as to whether or not I should do this video. So thank you very much to those who took part and I wanted to make very clear the intention of this video in case anyone got the wrong idea. But let's get into it. Arrowfire's Top 5 Number 5. Optimus Prime's Axe now, this is a staple of Transformers nowadays and really stemmed from the pilot episode of the G1 cartoon, to a point that you don't find Optimus without his axe anymore these days, certainly not in toy form. But the axe in and of itself, very much in that duo battle on top of the dam in Morna Meets the Eye pilot, it's a very noble weapon and very befitting of Prime's character, particularly when you look in contrast to going up against Megatron. Megatron had an energy mace ball and chain with spikes on it. It's a very barbaric weapon, which again was an extension of his character. Clearly the writers thought very long and hard about what weapons they could have in a duel, how could something look noble and heroic versus an evil barbarian, and they made a very good choice with a golden axe to be the title of a video game. It was a good image for Prime, and it just, again, really befitted his character to the point that we've seen it again since. The live action movies go with more swords nowadays for Prime, but video games have shown Optimus with axes before. It's become a staple of his weapon. And as I say, when it comes to toy releases, you find an axe with Optimus Prime figures just as much nowadays as you find a Matrix accessory. It's very much an extension of Prime's character. Number four, Predaking's Energy Sword. We don't see it too much. Really, the one that comes to mind is the Teletran 2 files where you see the introduction of Predaking. But the fact that Predaking generally carries a sword anyway, I always felt swords in Transformers was a little bit of a silly concept because they're made of highly advanced metal. Would a steel sword cut it? But an energy lightsaber-esque sword, yup, that would do the job. And it just looks again very befitting of Predaking's character. He's got a massive arm cannon and a ginormous sword which contains a large amount of energy going through it. You look at Predaking as a character, he is a warlord anyway, shoulder cannons to boot and the personalities of the Predacons within. He doesn't need any more upgrading, but it shows that the character again has no known weakness and relishes the fight. So to have a basically a large sword, which again, there have been swords in Transformers before, but energy swords are not that common. It just carries that bit more of a dynamic weight behind an already intimidating character. Number three, Beast Wars Inferno's Flamethrower. Again, it's an extension of the character. He is a fire ant and maniacal at that, but we actually get a flamethrower in Transformers? That doesn't happen very often, if at all. Again, it's a little bit of a silly concept because would the metal melt? It arguably could, but if we're to believe that Transformers are made from highly advanced metal that doesn't age, corrode or rust, with the exception of plagues and space viruses. You look at a flamethrower being used by a maniacal maniac of the Predacons, it's again a good extension of the character. Inferno was again a very good character. He was good to kind of be let loose on the battlefield with two massive guns, but he is a fire ant. It's very befitting of his character and it's something we haven't seen before or since, so it's quite unique to the character's development as well. Number two, the Dinobot Swords. Yep, we're back on swords again. But I was going to pick 
Beast Wars Dinobot for his sword, and I guess I'll throw it in as an honourable mention because it is a very cool looking sword, very unique. But the Dinobots from G1, their swords come across very almost mystical. They're flame swords or high energy swords, and they cut right through Megatron, at least in terms of the comics. The Grimlock decides to slice him in half in one of the most iconic comic panels that you can find. But the swords are quite a staple of the characters as well. Swords in Transformers, and particularly for Autobots, can be few and far between anyway, certainly back in Generation 1. The Dinobots, again, it suited their barbaric nature. The fact that they would go into this fighting death pit like a gladiatorial arena, as I've said many times, I like that to Grimlock's backstory, Sword and Shield. Going into Fall of Cybertron video game, you had Grimlock with a sword and a massive shield. It's a good extension to the characters, because I kind of feel guns for the Dinobots, whilst they have them, never really works. It feels a little bit too finesse, and the Dinobots would practice finesse, but it's never really their style. But flame out of the mouth, or shooting lasers from horns, dropping missiles, dropping bombs, and then hyper-energy swords, that feels more befitting to untamable Dinobots. It's a good extension to the character, plus they look cool. If you look at the Studio Series 86 Dinobots that we've recently just got, there was a little bit of an uproar. They didn't all come with swords and you had to either source them through 3D printing or by other means. But again, it is quite a staple to the characters and it's a nice iconic scene to them when you see them charging through the battlefields with swords in the air. It is barbaric, but it, again, a very good extension to their untamable characters. And number one, you guessed it, Megatron's Fusion Cannon. It's as synonymous with Megatron as it is with any Transformer. I can't think of any incarnation of Megatron where he doesn't have a Fusion Cannon or massive bazooka arm cannon similar. It is a staple of his character. Is it barbaric like the Mace, Energon, Ball and Chain? Possibly not, but it certainly commands respect and firepower and it's the staple leader. I will never forget one of the early issues of IDW doing the All Hail Megatron series in the first edition where he enters the battlefield and makes this grand statement of blowing up an entire building with this one cannon. Even in IDW, when he becomes a stealth bomber element, he still has an Energon cannon or arm cannon similar to the point that in the 1986 movie, when he's reformatted into Galvatron, Galvatron has one similar. It is a statement. Even again, going back to IDW, when Optimus and Megatron have a bit of a chat, Megatron says to Prime, you always go for my cannon arm. Even Optimus would know it is a threat. Megatron was a strong force even without a cannon and just fighting one-on-one, -on -one, but his cannon was so devastating that other franchises, video games, comics, TV shows always show it as something that can wreak havoc and destruction. That is the extension to the character. He would be lost without it. He certainly would look naked without it. It is a very much a symbol of the Decepticons as a Decepticon symbol itself. It's the damage that he can wreak in his galactic domination or rising up against Autobot oppression, depending which mood he's in. I even liked it when Tarn was introduced into the comics that he had a twin arm cannon out of respect for his leader, Megatron. It is as much the identity of Megatron as anything else. You see it in any extension, going into Transformers 1 and what Megatron will become, it is very much part of his identity. It's anything else that belongs to the character who is arguably the most important character in Transformers. And there we go, that is my top five weaponry of Transformers. Again, it is just to talk about the extensions of the characters rather than talking about weapons in and of themselves. But thanks for watching. And as always, I will see you on the next one.